Hey data fans, Reed here. Today I'm excited to show you some really cool ways to add cool animations and hover effects to buttons in Power BI. Now, I was inspired by some effects that I came across on various websites and wanted to see if I could reproduce them in Power BI. And needless to say, I think I succeeded. So let's go ahead, hop into Power BI, and get started. So as you're noticing on the buttons in here, each of these has a bit of a sheen that's actually occurring and a bit of an animation in the background of these that's causing them to have cool little effects. So the two here in the middle actually just have a sheen going across them back and forth that I created. And then the bottom ones have that same sheen, but then it also changes the color as the sheen moves across the button itself. And then if I hover my mouse over the top buttons, notice that cool effect that's occurring. So now it's a hover effect animation. And then the one over here has kind of a raindrop falling effect that I wanted to add as well, just to see what types of animations I could make. And then kind of for a fun nerdy thing, I did the Millennium Falcon hyperdrive down here at the bottom that when I hover over it, it plays an animation as well, where it basically is going through hyperspace. That one again, just kind of for fun, but I wanted just to see if I could do it. And with all of these, each of these things utilizes GIFs to achieve these effects. So if I actually go ahead and start with this one here, what I've done is if I go to the fill option, there is a default state, just an image in here. That's actually just a PNG image that I took where the uh, animation is not occurring. But if I go over to the on hover, notice that now that is an actual GIF file that's being played. So what I do is I created it, I inverted the colors to make it a little bit darker. And then I basically animated this little strip at the bottom to kind of show that it could be clicked. And then with each of these as well, the GIF stays in there for the click effect, but then I darkened the transparency so it adds that kind of clickable effect to it. And that's the same that I, I created on any of these other buttons as well, just to give it that tactile kind of click feel. Same thing's happening here for the on hover. There is an animated GIF playing. And with these four bottom ones, the actual top item for the default state, that is what is actually the animation. So all three states, the default on hover and on press, have the same GIF plane. So it still has a clickable effect, but the sheen is occurring at default. And one of the reasons that I wanted to do this is I wanted to provide a way to kind of draw the user's eyes to a button that's on the page. And partially that's through an animation that can be added like this, where it kind of draws their attention over to the corner and, oh wait, there's a button there that I can click. So that was one of the things that I wanted to do. And again, kind of create more of that web-like experience that I've seen with CSS and HTML where people create these really cool button effects. And I wanted to see if we could do that in Power BI. Now I've made all of these animations, by the way, in PowerPoint. You could have made them in Photoshop or somewhere else, but to make it simplistic and to give you a file to use, let's go ahead, hop into PowerPoint now, and I'll show you the pages that I use to generate these buttons. So I have just a series of pages in here that are pretty straightforward. I basically created just a colored background in here. You can change this to whatever color you'd like. I just kind of like to light blue, but then I animated this bar. We go up to animations, notice that there is an animation for a line that drags it across for that sheen. If I actually go to full screen, you can see there's the sheen there. Here's the same version now, but that moves the color over. And if you give it a couple seconds, it will also animate back with the original colors. So I did one that went out and then came back. That way it creates a perfect loop when you play it. And that one you can see here, just the same thing. I have two objects in the page. There's the sheen bar. There's just the color that goes over top of the entire page. And it's just a series of simple animations with that line movement in here if you actually open up the animation pane. There's the initial pass over, and then when it swings back. For the Sheen 2, I just saw some examples of CSS buttons on web pages that I wanted to reproduce in here. So if we go ahead and do presentation mode, there's the Sheen going across, and then the alternative version, same Sheen that goes across, however, then it changes that color and it can come back. And again, with all of these, you have the option to change the primary and secondary colors. So you have full customization over this. And there's just a couple of animations going into here. That animated hover that I created that has those lines that go on the bottom, this is essentially a screenshot that I took to create the static default image. So I basically just did a print screen of this page here when it's not being animated. And then alternatively, you can have that animation in there. And then I ended up going for that kind of inverted color effect. And then this is the actual animation GIF that's played. Now the important part that I'll mention on here, again, because you want to have perfect loops. You don't want it to look like it's skipping or jittering at all. So when I created the animation, let me zoom in down here and actually show you this. I made sure, as you can see, that the animation stops 
directly back on the lines as they originally were. If it stops here, when it loops back to the beginning of the animation, when I create the GIF, there's gonna be issues with that. So I wanna make sure that it has a full loop and resets to any of those specific spots on the line if I'm actually exporting this. And then same thing here, if I zoom out again, we have the page here and I basically animated this in a downward direction. So we take that and animates down and that creates that raindrop effect that I told you about. And same thing, what I made sure to do is I had it end, if I can, here we go. You can see there, I made sure to have it finish on the spot that aligns with all the other dots. So then it will essentially reset to a place that won't jitter when it goes through the cycle of the GIF. Now to create the GIFs themselves, it's pretty straightforward. You go up to recording for any of these pages. Um, what I do is any page that I want to export as a GIF, I will delete everything else. So just cut those all out. Go ahead and select, cut. I have one page left. I go to recording. I go to export video. And I go to create an animated GIF. Now for all of these, I designed them to kind of be an ebb and flow forward and back. So for the first four with Sheens, they're 12 second GIFs. What it allows for is the Sheen to pass over once, four seconds pause, it passes back again, and then another four seconds pause before the GIF restarts. So it creates a nice staggered effect between all of them. So simply go ahead and drop that up to 12, choose your size. I've been doing large because I wanted a higher frame rate for these exports in, in that case, and select that. You select create GIF, pick the location that it go ahead and saves to, and that's all you need to do for it. The one thing that I did have a little bit of an issue with is if we go ahead and hop back into Power BI now, is because these are getting stretched out a bit, like this one here as the example, if I actually go to fill, I am doing fit. So it is stretching the image out. So I actually made these lines a bit straighter in the PowerPoint, just because I knew they would get stretched out and angled a little bit more. So, that, you know, and same thing with the, the raindrops is because the button is quite wide versus the standard PowerPoint slide, 16 by nine, it is gonna stretch the drops out just a little bit. But overall, it's a really cool effect that I think works well for objects that have a higher level of detail like these top two, there's a bit of that stretching that can occur unless you resize the buttons. But for the ones with the sheen, it's honestly not noticeable if it stretches or not. Like you can see that they work very well in this case and it has a really nice added effect. Please don't forget to like, comment, or share this video. Now, if this is your first time to my channel or you want to see more of these awesome videos, please click that subscribe and notification button. Also, feel free to show your support by becoming a channel member. Last but not least, you can download the file for today's video from my blog files page using the link down below. So until next time.